Okay, here I'm going to go over dihybrid crosses. So if you've seen the Punnett square basics, this builds on that. You can see those were just monohybrid crosses. This is dihybrid. We see our Punnett square getting ever larger here. So first off, a dihybrid cross involves two traits in a 4x4 four four Punnett square. An example is a pea plant that is heterozygous for round yellow seeds is self-fertilized. What are the phenotypic ratios of the resulting offspring, as we see here? So heterozygous round and yellow seeds, so heterozygous for yellow also. What happens if we cross two of these individuals together? We know how we got that trait by, in this case, showing this potential outcome for the cross. We're looking at this F1 generation. And what we need to first do is determine the parental genotypes and then the offspring or the gametes that these can produce. To derive the gametes, we're going to use the FOIL method, and that's from math class. First, outer, inner, last. You see this di distribution that occurs. So as a result from this heterozygous and heterozygous traits crossed together, two individuals, two parents, both heterozygous for these traits, notice that parent one has big R. We go through and we cross it with big Y. So see our big R and our big Y. The big R also gets distributed, though, to our little Y. So big R, little Y. The first parent, then, we need to also recognize the other allele, in this case the recessive, the little r. Little r goes to big Y. And then little r goes to little Y. This is parent 1. Now, because they're both the same, the parent 2 has the same potential gametes for offspring. So big R goes to big Y, big R to little Y, little r to big y, little r to little y. And these are our genotypes that we're going to use in our 4x4 four four opponent square. Um, so in this case, this has a little slightly different example, but that we did find that was, would be the gametes for those individuals. Now we're looking at slightly different, trying to make this example a little bit easier. We have our gametes here, and our gamete from this parent was all homozygous recessive. So it makes it a little bit easier when we go through and figure out this example Punnett square. And just as we saw in Punnett square basics, we did the same cross, the same drag down. So big R would be here, 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 and here. But we remember big R with little r, big R with little r, so on and so forth. How this is going to end up looking is like this. Now, a lot of students, I find, put the r and then do the r and the y and the r and the y. That's not how you want it to represent. You want to put like alleles together. So in this case, our big R and our little r are put together. Our big Y and our little y are put together. If we go back and look, that would stand for round and yellow. This would be the phenotype because round is dominant and yellow is dominant. And we notice that carry through throughout the same here. Again, remember this individual different than the initial example here is homozygous recessive. But you notice all of the R's are kept together and all of the Y's are kept together. The reason we do that for organization is when I ask for phenotypes, or you're asked to give the phenotype, it makes it much easier to follow and understand. So providing this with a little bit of a picture here, the cross, this is the homozygous recessive individual, both is rough and green, crossed in this case with homozygous dominant smooth and yellow. The results in all plants will produce this heterozygote here, and we see that example here. Now we're looking at taking these individuals and crossing them together in the F2 generation. And here is our heterozygous and our heterozygous. Crossing those together, this is our resulting offsprings. The cross between two individuals from the F1 generation increases variation due to the heterozygote. And we can notice here, it basically forms a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And we see that represented right here. Again, remember that yellow is dominant, so is smooth. Rough in green would be the recessive. We see one individual here from these two heterozygotes would be that rough in that green color. So I know this is a little bit difficult to follow maybe initially. But if you go back over and look at some of these examples and follow where these gametes come from, I think it'll be easier to understand. This is putting it all together in a dihybrid cross. Here we have the initial generation, the F1. And we take two of these individuals, we want to cross them together, and that's where it gets a little bit more confusing. And that's where we get to this 4x4. Remember, the gametes are distributed, big R with big Y, big R with little Y, little R with big Y, little R with little Y, and the same here. And we just simply drag and cross them together. Keep like alleles together, and it'll be a whole lot easier. Uh, Brian, here with some video links, uh, if you want some to hear from a couple other people, some other ideas, uh, some other great videos to watch, 
You are welcome to enjoy these to supplement the information presented here.